Hey everyone and welcome to the third, <laughs> third? <laughs> hey everyone and welcome to the third episode of Mel Goes Wild. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking all about hiking footwear. So hiking boots and hiking shoes. So my very first pair of hiking boots cost me 49 euro and they lasted me for a year. However, uh, they definitely weren't waterproof. They didn't fit me correctly. Uh, they weren't warm. I used to get blisters. So on today's episode, I'm gonna give you some uh, tips and some info on how you can go and pick the right boots for you. So firstly, let's talk about the fit and the size. You should know your size. I was wearing a full size too small. I was wearing a UK size 38. Uh, and when I went in to get a shoe fitting, I was told that I needed to go up an entire size in my hiking boots. So my recommendation is that you should go into an Irish owned outdoor store. Most of the stores will actually provide a fitting service. And when you go in, they will fit you correctly for a pair of uh, either it's gonna be hiking boots or hiking shoes. Hiking boots should fit snug, but there should be a little bit of room to wiggle your toes. <laughs> when you're in store trying on hiking footwear, Below are some things to look out for. Also to note, if you can stabilize your foot while wearing your preferred sock, meaning you should be able to lock your heel back with your lacing technique. If the boots are laced firmly and you still feel space above the top of your foot or your foot slides forward, then the volume of the boot is wrong and you'll probably end up with friction blisters. If this is the case, I do suggest sizing down or trying on another brand of hiking boot. My top tip this week. Spend some time in the boots, go for a walk around the store, walk up and down the stairs, find an inclined surface, because what shouldn't be happening is your feet are being pressed or smushed up the top of your hiking boot. That means that the hiking boot is not the right fit for you. Hiking boots come in all different types of cuts, depending on your type of hiking. Are you a casual hiker or are you more of an advanced hiker that spends most of your time traversing off trail on like rocky and rough terrain because that's going to determine what type of hiking footwear that you should buy. <laughs> there are three types to consider. First up, your low cut or your hiking shoes. These are similar to running or trail shoes and are excellent for day hikes on really well-maintained trails. While they're perfect for lightweight casual hiking, this cut unfortunately leaves you vulnerable to ankle injuries. Some ultra lightweight backpackers may even choose trail running shoes for long distance journeys. I have both hiking boots and trail runners. Depending on the terrain, we'll then decide which type of footwear I'm going to wear on my hike that day. Next up is your mid cut. This style offers more ankle support and balance than low cut. They're built to handle a heavier load and can stand up against tough terrain. It would also protect against debris and provide better weather protection. They usually do have a similar waterproofing as higher cut boots, but with more freedom of movement and flexibility. This style is intended for day hikes, short backpacking trips with lighter loads and traversing on rough and rocky terrain. Last up are your high cuts. These are the most sturdy, durable, and supportive of hiking footwear options. They are often mostly waterproof and designed to keep your feet dry in muddy conditions, rainstorms, or on snowy trails. Most have a high cut that wraps above the ankles for excellent support. This cut is best for advanced hikers who go off trail, traverses tough terrain, and is carrying heavier loads on multi-day hiking trips. Another thing to note when you're buying your hiking boots. If you plan to do mountaineering or winter backpacking, having compatible boots and crampons is essential for your safety. There's a wide range of materials for all the different types of hiking footwear, from split grain leather to full grain leather to new book leather. So I'm just gonna give you a list of the different materials here to kind of give you an idea as to which ones would be best suited to your type of hiking. Materials impact a boot's weight, breathability, durability, and water resistance. First up, full grain leather. Most commonly used in backpacking boots built for extended trips, heavy loads, and rugged terrain. There is ample break-in time needed before starting an extended trip with these boots. Split grain leather. The benefit is they're lower cost, however the downside is less resistance to water and abrasion, though many do feature waterproof liners. The downside of synthetic materials are they may show more wear and tear sooner due to more stitching on the outside of the boot. 
Your hiking footwear is made up of loads of different components, from your upper to your midsoles and to your outer soles. Your hiking boot upper. The upper itself isn't what's waterproof. It either has a sock-like waterproof booty inside or more likely it has an invisible to you waterproof membrane or liner beneath the upper. Any hiking boot or hiking shoes named as waterproof will feature an upper constructed with waterproof breathable membranes such as Gore-Tex to keep feet dry in wet conditions. My recommendation when buying hiking boots or hiking shoes is to invest in a good pair that do provide solid waterproofing like Gore-Tex. Your hiking boot midsole. The midsole provides cushioning and support and absorbs shock underfoot. It's typically constructed of one of two materials, EVA and PU. I'm not going to bore you with these materials, but do feel free to Google them if you want some more information. Your outsole. Rubber is used on all hiking boot outsoles and it is what keeps you on your feet and not on your ass. <laughs> Traction comes from your outsole's lugs. Deep lugs tend to offer the best grip while shedding mud and debris more easily. Softer rubber is stickier, while harder rubber is more durable. That's why most hiking boots use a medium sticky rubber outsole, like Vibram. Vibram soles are slip resistant, long lasting and waterproof. And you can see them here underneath my hiking boots. Every week I answer some of our Gals Gone Wild community questions. First up, Katie asks, I'm new to hiking, should I spend a lot of money on hiking footwear? Unless you are hitting the trails most days, my recommendation would be no. You don't need to spend a lot of money on your first pair of hiking boots. There is such a huge range of hiking boots to choose from that will suit everyone's budget and still offer comfort and safety when you're out on the trail. However, if you do find yourself hiking most weekends and on varied terrain, then my advice would be to invest in a solid pair of good hiking boots. Think about your cost per use. You buy a great pair of 200 euro hiking boots, and wear them most weekends for a year. That means you'll be paying two euro for each hike. With the correct aftercare, you can keep those boots for years. Cara asks, hiking boots or hiking shoes? I have both and it will just depend on the type of hike I'm doing on that day. So this all depends on the type of hike you intend to do. Hiking shoes and boots are both designed for hiking long distances. However, if you are hiking on a hard road surface in a sturdier, heavier, high cut boot, for instance, then it may be a little tough and uncomfortable. In fact, you will actually use more energy to cover the same distance. A lighter hiking shoe or trail runner is probably better suited for road walking or well-maintained forest trails. As always, I just want to say thank you so much for watching, for sharing it, for liking. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It really helps get the kind of word out there. Uh, if you've become a patron of Mel Goes Wild, thank you so much. It just enables me to continue creating these videos for you. Next week, we're actually going to be talking all about waterproofing and how to actually look after your hiking boots. And until then, don't forget to get outdoors and go wild.